Good evening, everyone, and happy June to you all. Tonight is the uh, June 1st of the City Council uh, meeting. Uh, Mayor Robert Oderkirk is presiding. Uh, tonight, Pastor Lonnie Posley of the New Canaan Land Christian Church, 225 uh, East Clinton Street, will give our invocation and then lead us into the pledge. Pastor Posley. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, once again, we come before thee with a bowed head and a humble heart saying thank you. Thank you, God, for this auspicious leadership that you put in place. God, we pray that you bless our mayor, those that work alongside with him and their families, God. Look upon this city, God, and keep us in that word called perfect peace as we keep our minds stayed on thee. And we pray that everything that we do and say will be done in decent and order. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, and for his sake, and all God's people said together, amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We begin with roll call, Mayor Odekirk. Here. Here. Councilman Clement. Here. Councilwoman Gavin. Here. Councilman Guerrero. Here. Councilman Hug. Here. Councilman Morris. Here. Councilman Mudrin. Here. Councilwoman Coleman. Here. Councilwoman Reardon. Here. Before we start with the agenda items, I believe Pastor Posley has a few words he would like to say. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, City Council, men and women. I just, there's a few things that we're going to change. I um, um, found a prayer line number, so if someone want to call in, and I'll pass out some brochures. If you want to call in on Tuesday mornings at 7 a.m., uh, I got the prayer line. And then also, too, on this Saturday at 7 a.m., we're going to gather at the uh, Stateville. But we, our golden objective is all four corners of the city to gather and pray at the interest place of the city. Uh, this concept comes from the book of Ezra and it can work then and can work now. And we do appreciate this great opportunity. And those of you that will join us this Saturday at Stateville, the old College Street Prison, uh, we would love for you to be with us. Uh, so I'll be passing these out so you can call in. Pastor, just so I'm clear, is this at noon on Saturday or 7? It's seven? Be at 7. That's the time. 7 a.m.? Yeah. Okay. You're talking on the microphone. Oh. Yeah. I figured that people have things to do at noon, and if we start earlier, we can get it done and, you know, go on about our business. So we change that time from noon to 7 a.m. Okay. So we hope that you join us. Any city official, any Will County official, please feel free to come and join us. And call us on Tuesday mornings. You can announce yourself if you like. If you don't, you don't have to. I've been praying now for about a year and a half. And it's changed my whole concept, my life. We want to pray for your family. We want to pray for your children. We all need prayer. And again, I thank you, Mayor, for this opportunity. And I pray that you join us. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, Pastor. Yes. yes. You said there was a number for the call in Yes, line. it's on, on the paper. Oh, yeah. okay. So we'll put that up on the website. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I just want to be clear. So, Saturday, what time? 7 a.m. So, not, not 12. Not, not so, really. this is Mr. Mayor. Okay. Yeah. Got so you. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate that. This concept worked in Aurora. I did it with Aurora <clears throat> for uh, one whole year. Uh, Councilman Terry, there was no homicides in Aurora. It worked in Aurora. I believe if it can work there, it can work here. If you can join us this Saturday at 7 a.m., we'll appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Appreciate you. Sure. I did receive a request for a brief closed session at this time. So is there a motion to go into closed session to discuss personnel, collective bargaining, land acquisition, or conveyance pending or threatened litigation, after which the meeting will reconvene? So moved. Second. Been motion seconded to approve. Councilman Clement? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. 
Councilman Guerrero? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Pullman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Motion carried. Meeting is reconvening at 7 11 p.m. So, first on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as written with the following change? Remove position vacancies from consent agenda and vote on each position separately. So moved. Second. Been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Guerrero? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Councilman Clement? Aye. Motion carried. Next is citizens to be heard on agenda items. First is John Filipchuk. Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. John Filipchuk, I'm an attorney with offices at 111 East Jefferson Avenue in Naperville, Illinois. I'm here again this evening representing Speedway LLC. As you will recall, Speedway is proposing to invest $9 million in the city of Joliet with their new facility down at 2121 South Chicago Street. That's Route 53 and Emerald Drive. And we are here tonight to again urge you to approve the ordinance 28821, which would allow us to be able to sell beer and wine from inside the C-Store and take away the need for us to construct a separate building. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mike Makuska. I am with uh, Joliet Petroleum and we also support 28821. Uh, passing this ordinance does not give everyone a liquor license. They have to go through the same application process as everyone else, felony background checks, and then the council has to vote on each individual case as to what they want to do. Uh, the Liquor Commission has done a very good job of uh, policing liquor licenses and uh, we support the work they do. And if there's ever an issue, of course, the uh, commission can pull their license. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on an agenda item this evening? Seeing none, we'll move to appointments. First appointment this evening, the mayor is recommending Councilwoman Quillman to serve as a liaison to the Will Joliet Bicentennial Park Board. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. second. Then motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Guerrero? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Quillman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Councilman Clement? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Motion carried. Next, the mayor is recommending Bob Wanderlick be appointed to the plan commission. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. So, then motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Quillman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Councilman Clement? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Guerrero? Aye. <clears throat> motion carried. Council committee reports first is land use and legislative committee report. Yes, the land use and legislative committee uh, met, I think that was Thursday, May 27th. I know it was May 27th at 4 p.m. here in the council chamber. Uh, myself, along with committee member uh, Councilman Clement and Councilwoman Quillman. We met, we had one agenda item, uh, the liquor code amendment. Uh, is Chris still? Is Chris still? I was going to ask Chris to help me. My committee members to help me. We had much discussion o over the liquor code amendment uh, concerning the uh, uh, beer and wine sales at gas stations as well as some uh, tweaking of some of the hours uh, of the uh, sale of alcohol in the city as a whole. So staff is going to be coming back uh, to the committee with some uh, amendment changes for hours of sales, uh, as well as, I guess, the days of the week. And uh, we were, uh, again, uh, we was advised by uh, 
legal our legal department to go into closed session this evening, which we did uh, for further discussions uh, of the litigation that has taken place uh, uh, concerning the liquor code. Uh, did I get that? Yeah. Councilwoman? Yeah. You good? Yep. And that, that was pretty. It was just the one item. So, and and but it was much discussion over over that over that item, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Prison committee report. Yes, Your Honor. The prison committee met on May twentieth uh, here in the council chambers. Uh, present uh, was Councilwoman Reardon and Councilman Guerrero. Uh, we discussed, we started off the meeting discussing uh, an issue regarding the illegal dumping around that site of the disc golf uh, site. Uh, the one good thing that came out of that meeting uh, was that we were able to identify uh, some of the illegal dumpers. And so we, uh, I contacted uh, the city manager and brought it to him so uh, he will pursue those. We had a great presentation uh, from uh, Greg P uh, Prebo from the uh, museum that gave us an update on um, the prison as it, uh, where we started as up to today. It was a great uh, visual presentation. A lot of things have been going on and we are in really a good place there. We will um, resume our meeting tomorrow, June 2nd. We had an agreement that come before the council that we had to table at that time. And so tomorrow at four o'clock, June 2nd, four o'clock, we will be reconvening that meeting to address the agreement. Um, other than that, councilman, councilwoman. Good job. Is that about it? Mm -hmm. Okay. That is our report, uh, Your Honor. Thank you. Public Service <coughs> Committee report. Mayor, I arrived during public comments after the, com the committee meeting started, so Terry took on the, re the role of chairman of the Public Service, so he'll be giving the report. Oh, thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hook. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we met this afternoon at 4.30 here in the council chamber, myself, Councilwoman Gavin, Councilman Hub, as well as Councilwoman Quillman was in attendance. Uh, and. Again, we, uh, uh, under contracts, it was the uh, decorative lights that the city is, is working with ComEd uh, and to replacing a lot of, well, all of our street lights with LED lights. Uh, and it was brought to, you know, the uh, committee's attention that some outreach to some of the neighborhood uh, associations was not done. So uh, my understanding staff is going to do that. Uh, and bring everybody kind of up to speed on what type of lighting will be coming. Uh, it's a big cost savings uh, effort and uh, also under somewhat of a time constraint for the grant from ComEd to uh, make this happen by the end of the year, well, when November. Uh, so at that point, uh, there's a couple of different types of bulbs. And, and again, as I said, the, the staff will be reaching out to neighborhood associations to bring those uh, people up to kind of speed on what's going to be happening. Uh, the uh, the committee moved, moved it to the full council for approval with those uh, upset, 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 what am I trying to say? With those two things, the uh, reaching out to the neighborhood and, 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 and as, as well as the uh, different types of bubs that we'll be able to use. So that's going to be presented to the Neighborhood Association. The other contract was uh, also with Graybar Services, who will be the uh, so somewhat of the person that's hand uh, company that's handling the decorative streetlight upgrades. Uh, and, and we discussed that, and that was uh, to award them a contract for uh, equipment for our streetlights. Uh, this coming year, uh, uh, none was done last year out of the budget, but we had some equipment left over from the previous year. <clears throat> Excuse me. On the change orders and pay estimates, uh, we had one uh, item was approval for the uh, 
fire truck call a platform apparatus, but basically, I guess, a fire truck, from my, from my understanding, for $1.6 million. Uh, that's not to exceed that amount. Uh, staff said it should come up on the lower that. This money was uh, uh, budgeted in the bond purchase that, that we did. Uh, it was approved with a two-to-one vote for approval to the full council for consideration. All the other uh, change orders and pay estimates uh, was discussed uh, and they were all approved unanimous to the full council. Uh, on the ordinance, I believe we just had one ordinance, uh, resolution declaring intent to negotiate the yeah, water commission. Um, so this is the negotiate the cre creation. Uh, and uh, right now we were told by staff that there, there has been one city that has also had this on their agenda and has approved it. So we're moving forward with the creation of the water commission uh, for to provide Lake Michigan water. So that was discussed and approved by the committee uh, unanimously. Did I miss anything, Mr. Chairman? No. Ms. Gavin. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I show no other reports. Under consent agenda, approval of the minutes. It's recommended the minutes of the pre-council meeting held on May 17, 2021, and the minutes of the council meeting held on May 18, 2021 stand approved as recorded. Council memo 275-21 position vacancies was removed from consent agenda and will be voted on separately. Council memo 276-21 regular payroll for March 12th through March 25th, 2021. $3,265,773.36. Council memo 277-21, regular payroll for March 26th through April 8th, 2021, $3,497,848.59. Council memo 278-21, regular payroll for April 9th through April 22nd, 2021. Three million four hundred ninety-eight thousand nine hundred twenty-three dollars and twelve cents. It's recommended said regular payrolls be approved. Council memo two seventy-nine dash twenty-one purchase of one E one platform apparatus from fire services, not to exceed the amount of one million six hundred thousand dollars. Council memo two eighty dash twenty-one award of a professional services contract for the twenty twenty-one decorative street light upgrades project to Gray Bar Services in the amount of $277,176.42. Council Memo 281-20, 2021 Electrical Materials Purchase Order to Gray Bar Services in the amount of $249,136.74. Council Memo 282-21, Change Order Number 1 in the amount of negative $7,000. $7,941.58 and payout number one and final for the Young's Avenue Storm Sewer Improvement Project 2021 to construction by Camco in the amount of $30,696.53. Council Memo 283-21, change order number two to the 2020-2024 snow removal contract for the commuter lot area to snow systems in the amount of $29,400. Council Memo 284-21, amended change order number three for the 2020 Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation Program to performance pipelining in the amount of $2,947.50. Council Memo 285-21, amendment number one to the professional services agreement for the West Side Wastewater Treatment Plant Project Plan to Strand Associates in the amount of $25,000. Recommended Council Memos 279 through 285 21 be approved. Is there a motion to approve all said consent, consent agenda items? So moved. Second. Mayor? Yes. I have a question about uh, 280 and 281. That was on the uh, public service thing th this afternoon, and <clears throat> I attended that meeting as a neighbor, not as a council person. However, um, the I was unable to stay for the vote, but I had asked for a compromise for the lighting and uh, none of the neighbors organizations were notified of this change in this lighting. It had been talked about for a couple years, but then nothing was ever said. And so, you know, we always talk about being transparent, letting neighbors know, 
but nobody knew about this sudden change that all of a sudden we're under the gun. So I had asked for uh, the no neighbors to be notified. So I want to make sure before we go forward be with purchasing these lights that uh, the correct lights, the color, because it's a um, historic neighborhood, the Upper Bluff District, it doesn't get a blue LED light. It gets something that would comparable to what's there now. And that's what the committee recommended at the end. If, correct me if I'm wrong. Was that what happened at the end? That staff would be able to talk right 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 about right. the shade of uh, exactly but i just want to make sure that that's voted on upon the whole council right mm -hmm. okay yeah okay just one for the record thank you to motion seconded to approve all said consent agenda items councilman morris aye councilman mudrin aye councilwoman quillman aye councilwoman reardon aye councilman clement aye Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Guerrero? Aye. Councilman Hug? Abstain. Motion carried. Moving back to Council Memo 275-21, position vacancies. There'll be three separate votes for this memo. The first, it's recommended the city manager be authorized to fill three firefighter paramedic positions and any subsequent vacancies which may occur. So motion to approve. So move. Second. Okay. Been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Pullman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Councilman Clement? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Guerrero? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Motion carried. Next for Council Memo 275-21, it's, recommend it's recommended the city manager be authorized to fill one public relations manager position and any subsequent vacancies which may occur. Mayor? Yes, clarification. Now, this is a new position, and therefore, there'd be a budget amendment at some point coming forward. That's correct, okay. Councilman. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Been motion and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Coleman? No. Councilwoman Reardon? No. Councilman Clement? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? No. Councilman Guerrero? Uh, question, is is there uh, any staff currently that we have that are... No, there's, any, there's any no one that duty? fills that position. Um, again, uh, we do a terrible disservice. Uh, you've heard me argue this before, that we don't get our word, our, 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 our message out. Uh, school boards have a public relations person. The county health board has a public relations board. Uh, the county has several. One just for the county board president has a public relations person. Uh, the city of Joliet has no public relations person. Um, I, I find it very difficult to even recall any um, public uh, organization of our size that does not have a public relations person that is able to put out press releases and to tell our side of the story. Um, that's why I believe it's critical that we, we come step in to the, uh, the new century here. And, and this is, you know, social media uh, is, is some of the things that we need to be aware of and to be able to get our word out. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, we're fighting for money. We have to tell our story. Uh, this money that's gonna come from COVID relief, uh, is is money that we need to we're, we're fighting with against places like Naperville and Aurora and uh, they're going to start to put out press releases on why uh, it's so important that they get money and we will be silent uh, when it comes to that we will not be able to get our side of the argument out uh, so I, I believe it's critical uh, as we fight for these funds going forward that these uh, actually the two positions I asked for uh, be granted uh, nobody knocks on your door and offers you a job Nobody's going to knock on our door and give us money. So um, I, I believe that that's why this is a critical position. Um, that being said, I'll, I'll vote aye. Councilman Hug? No. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Uh, we, we still have 26 unfunded positions in our budget uh, with that, I have to vote no. 
Motion failed, three ayes, five noes. The next item under Council Memo 275-21, position vacancies. It's recommended the city manager would be authorized to fill one grants coordinator position and any subsequent vacancies which may occur. So motion? moved. Second. It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Clement. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Guerrero. Aye. Councilman Hug. Seeing that there's quite a few professional organizations out there that do this and only get paid when they bring to us um, an approved grant that we want. I don't see a reason to leave, as uh, Councilman Mudger just pointed out, the many unfunded positions we have. So I, I think that we should be going, you don't produce, you don't get paid. It's kind of a good way to do it. So I'll have to vote no. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. No. Nope. Councilwoman Coleman. I think this is a very important position and um, sometimes grant money is left on the table because we don't know how to pursue it. So I have to vote aye. Motion carried 6-2. Moving under ordinances. Council Memo 287-21, Ordinances Associated with Timber Oaks Unit 3 <coughs> Subdivision. This includes an ordinance approving the final planned unit development of Timber Oaks Unit 3 Subdivision, an ordinance approving the recording plat of the planned unit development of Timber Oaks Unit 3 Subdivision. It's recommended said ordinances be adopted. So moved. Second. Mayor. Yes. I believe all of you got a uh, letter today from Cynthia Hamilton, who lives out there. And um, <clears throat> she asked me that I would read it because she was unable to, have, to be at this meeting today to work, because she had to work. And before I go with the letter, um, Mr. Torrey, remember we asked about certified letters being sent to all the neighbors that live there? Do you have them with the receipts? Okay, because she said not everyone received them, including herself. Did you, do you have one in there for the Hamilton? Would you do that, please, while I read this? Thank you. It's in your email. Did you get it? She sent it to everyone. So I printed it. Uh, my name is Cynthia Hamilton. I live at 4459 Timber Ridge Court, Joliet 60431. I understand Mr. Maddox is coming in front of the board tonight to deal with a new build in front of the Timber Oaks main entrance. Mr. Maddox sent out information December 2020 regarding the new build in front of the Timber Oaks. Some of the residents received the notice and others did not. My neighbors and I have some concern that we would like the city to know of. We are currently in a construction zone due to the home town homes being built inside Timber Oaks. Construction traffic sometimes blocks the main entrance due to the trucks and construction crews parking on opposite sides of the streets, semi-trucks bringing in supplies, etc. Our concern is with the build on McDonough Tallgrass and the build in front of the main entrance of Timber Oaks. There's a possibility that we could be blocked from getting inside of the subdivision, especially if the construction crews slash construction semi trucks being in supplies park on the side of the roads rather than inside the construction areas. I have spoken with Mr. Maddox about our concerns, but wanted to bring it to the city council's attention as well. <coughs> Another concern is the traffic. I believe the city needs to reevaluate and place stop signs and speed bumps around and near and perhaps inside Timber Oaks as they will be a lot more traffic in the area. Will the city reevaluate what is needed in the area after the bills are complete? I could not attend tonight's meeting due to work as I'm an hour away, but wanted all of you to know of our concerns. Sincerely, Cynthia Hamilton. So basically I did talk to her and um, they know that the building is gonna take place. They just want some consideration why they're living there to have to deal with all this construction. I guess it's been an issue with the traffic and the uh, debris, so. Cynthia, I did what you asked me to do. Okay, it was motion and seconded to approve Council Memo 287-21 <coughs> ordinances associated with Timber Oaks Unit 3 um, subdivision. Jim Torrey's got something. Did you, did you get the answer? She did receive notification. She did get it? She okay. Got her return. Okay, all right. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you for looking that up. Councilman Clement? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Guerrero? Aye. 
Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Um, Mr. Maddox, I hope that you go with their concerns and I'm going to vote aye. I'm going to trust you to do that. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Motion carried. Next is Council Memo 288-21, Ordinance Amending Chapter 4, Sections 4-1, 4-15B, 4-23, 4-30, and Repealing Section 4-39 of the City of Gillette Code of Ordinances, Amending Liquor Code to Allow Package Sales and Video Gaming at Gas Stations. Um. Are we going to skip over this in the agenda and come back to it? Yes, so we can move this to the end. Okay. So move on under resolutions, Council Memo 290-21, a resolution declaring intent to negotiate creation of a new water commission to provide Lake Michigan water. It's recommended that the <coughs> resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. Second. Been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Guerrero. I think this is a wonderful first step in, in uh, you know, lowering water costs for everybody. So certainly we'll vote aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Clement. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 291-21, a resolution approving the dedication of a drainage and access easement for the Rock Run Crossings development. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. <coughs> so moved. Second. Been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Guerrero. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Clement. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 292-21, a resolution approving an agreement for the purchase and sale of real property with Natural Gas Pipeline Company of America, LLC. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. Been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Clement. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Guerrero. Aye. Motion carried. Is the server up? Are we able to get yes, the document? Yes, we do have a copy here. So if we would like a, another closed session, I need a motion to go into closed session to discuss litigation, after which the meeting will reconvene. So, so moved. moved. Second. It's in motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Clement. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Guerrero. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Motion carried. In session and full council is in attendance. So moving back to Council Memo 288-21 an ordinance amending chapter 4 sections 4-1, 4-15b, 4-23, 4-30 and repealing section 4-39 of the City of Joliet Code of Ordinances amending liquor code to allow package sales and video gaming at gas stations. It's recommended said ordinance be adopted. There's a motion. Is there a second to approve? Second. Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Mudrin? No. Councilwoman Quillman? That's a tough one. Because I made a mistake the first time because I was led down the wrong path by the former city manager. And um, trying to be fair, I, I just, I just don't know. I don't think yes is right. I don't think no is right.
and I'll vote yes. Councilwoman Reardon? No. Councilman Clement? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? I agree with Councilwoman uh, Quillman. It is a tough decision to make, but uh, I'm going to vote aye. Councilman Guerrero? Aye. Councilman Hug? No. Councilman Morris? Aye. Motion carried 5-3. So moving to Council Memo 293-21. So resolution repealing resolution number 7550 and granting a liquor license to Lambert Enterprises for the premises at 1529 North Broadway Street. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. Been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? No. Councilman Clement? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? <clears throat> Aye. And I'm going to need one right after this meeting. <laughs> Councilman Guerrero? Aye. Councilman Hug? No. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? No. Motion carried 5-3. <clears throat> Next is the city manager's report. I, I know it's been a long evening, but I just, I just want to briefly, very briefly, uh, announce the addition of uh, Ms. Eva Marie uh, Tropper to the City of Joliet as the new Director of Community Development, which was effective today. So she's replacing Kendall uh, Jackson, uh, which, 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 as we all know, was a great guy and, and did a tremendous job. And this search has been ongoing for, for quite a, a long time. Um, some of her previous roles include planning positions with the City of Naperville, Orland Park, and most recently the City of Chicago. She also served as a project manager in the Department of Planning and Development, Special Projects and Operations in the Commissioner's Office of the Development of Planning and Development, and a Strategic Advisor for Policy, Research, and Development in the Commissioner's Office of the Department of Housing with the City of Chicago. She holds a Bachelor Degree in Arts with Honors in Urban and Economic Geography, a Master's of Science in Planning, with specialization in urban and regional planning and received her MBA specializing in corporate strategy and execution from the University <coughs> of Notre Dame. So uh, she'll be in good company here with Councilman Mudrin. So we'd like to welcome her aboard and I, I'm expecting great things from her. And uh, w this has been a position that has been sorely needed. So we'll, we all welcome her aboard. So thank you, that's all I have for today. New business, not for final action or recommendation. Joe, Betty, see you. Larry, Terry, Get me on. Ed, Jim. No. Okay. Nothing. Next is public comments. Peggy Grendel. Now this is going to be some good news, I think. Hi everyone, Peggy Grandel from Rihel Drive in Joliet. It's been a while since I've seen most of you. It's good to see you again. I'm here today to share some very important news. Last evening in the final hours of the 2021 legislative session, the Illinois Senate passed HB 1711, the Humane Pet Store Bill. No longer will pet stores be able to sell commercially bred puppies and kittens here in our state. Yes. Consumer choice has been preserved with individuals being able to either adopt from a shelter, rescue, or animal control, or work with a responsible, excuse me, a responsible breeder. And as we know, responsible breeders do not sell their puppies to pet stores or brokers. 
This bipartisan bill was strongly supported by the Illinois state reps and the senators. They listened to the testimony in the committee meetings. They did independent research, and most importantly, they listened to their constituents. Most of us that stood before you in 2017 have been on the front line to get this bill passed, and this day has finally come. Having said that, although we didn't agree on the humane ordinance Joliet voted on in 2017, we appreciated the city having worked with us on other animal welfare initiatives, and we hope to partner again when needed to make life better for pets and their people here in Joliet. And of course, we're hoping to, all, we're hoping to see all of you at the 2022 Pause on 66 event. I once again want to thank Jan Cloman, who never ever gave up on the initiative to see Joliet become a truly humane community. My thanks also to Mayor Oda Kirk, for meeting with Jan and I a few weeks back, for being willing to come to the table and have a meaningful discussion about going humane. I am thrilled, as well as many, that Joliet will never ever again be home to businesses that insist on treating animals as products where unknowing consumers become victims. I respectfully ask that the humane ordinance request that was tabled at the April Land Use Committee meeting be removed from further discussion. I'm proud to be a resident of Illinois. Thank you all. Thank you. Is that there was anyone the else? light of my end of my dark day that I had today. So thank you, Peggy, for that. Is there anyone else that would like to speak under public comments? Gavin, a, a young lady told me to thank you. She reached out to you regarding an issue she was having with a landlord, and whatever you said or done, he got it together. Thank so you. we appreciate you for that. With that being said, it's an issue with slumlords in this city. So we had something with Terry a couple weeks back about the landlords. I did my due diligence, and the outpouring was tremendous. There are people who are afraid to speak up because their landlords will retaliate against them. One story that stood out in particular was a young lady who said that she, her son had asthma and there was black mold in the living unit that she was in. She took her son to the, doc, to the hospital. They patched him up, whatever. Two weeks later, he had to stay two weeks because she, her son was being exposed to the black mold, which was causing an allergic reaction in his uh, asthma. So she moved. Her landlord kept her deposit because she broke the terms of her lease where she was faced with either the health of her son or fulfilling the lease obligation. The stories that I have gotten has been just heartbreaking. So you got Alliance Electric Company coming. You have North Point coming. With those entities brings jobs. It is our responsibility to give people adequate housing. They are going to come here looking for those jobs. We need to close the gap between these slumlords and the tenants. The tenants right now don't have a voice. They're scared to speak up because they're going to be kicked out or retaliated against. The last person, the last people to be involved in this are landlords, single family rental properties. That needs to be addressed because the store and the number one complaint was Proton. 80% of the complaints I got were from Proton. But there are people with some really heartbreaking stories that's involving kids. One young lady got removed from a property, $3,500. She said she had three kids. They got older. They needed more space. She did a walkthrough with the landlord. He didn't find anything. She called about her deposit. Three weeks later, he found something and kept a whole $3,500 deposit. There are not people who can afford to get lawyers and go to court or file complaints. There are some people who are not educated, so they just let it go. We need to be the voice that they can come to and get these people in compliance. Because this is ridiculous that people would even live in these conditions. And to have a child get sick in an apartment for living for, for that type of stuff, any mother would be heartbroken with that. We all have kids and none of us want to see that. So can we get this back on the table immediately and get this approved? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Next is Mayor and Council comments. Joe. Yeah, just real quick, Mayor. Um, you know, I spoke to, over the last couple of weeks, some of the officers at the police department, and they're, 
you know, it's a tough job this day and age. It's always been a tough job, but, you know, now more than ever in the climate. And uh, they're just concerned that, you know, the council or maybe the city as a whole may not have their back. And I, I, I assured them I do, and, and I think they just need to hear it publicly. And I just want to publicly say I, I have their back. When they do the right things, I, I have their back. You know, go out and do your job. Uh, that's our main main priority up here is, is to keep the uh, the public safe. So, like I said, we did the job, and, and it's tough more than ever. I just want to let the men and women know that I, that I have their back. So, thank you. I'll follow up. I, I agree with you, and I think this community absolutely does. Um, you know, whenever you go speak at community meetings, um, usually police officers there, the, the neighbors, the citizens want to hear from the police about what's happened in their community. Um, there's a great want and need for NOPT officers. The program clearly works. We don't have enough of the neighborhoods in this city. So I, I think the city of Joliet is definitely behind the police department and want to see them do their job and want safety and order in their neighborhoods. I agree. Thanks. You know, yeah, if I could just tag on to uh, the councilman's comment, I just wanted to make this uh, very clear that I have always and will always uh, support our, our police department. They do a fantastic job. They are out there every day putting it on the line for us. And so uh, we certainly respect them. Uh, the community uh, certainly needs them as well, and we must work on getting more NOPT officers out here. So. New business? Uh, I guess we'll just keep the theme running here. I mean, it's no, no secret that a big uh, element of, of my campaign was the need for police reform. And I wanted to make it very clear not to conflate that with any any sort of straw man of, of what that uh, what that argument means. I think we're all in agreement that uh, the police play an essential role in our community, um, and that the goal here is not to uh, it's, it's to bridge that that gap, bridge that divide um, that may be perceived within some uh, some neighborhoods, some areas. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Mr. Hervey, you've got my contact information. I'd love to follow up with you about some of these, uh, the stories, the feedback that you're getting from, um, you know, tenants who are, who are maybe experiencing difficulties with their landlords. I'll speak plainly, and I'll continue the theme myself as well. I thought it was silly when people called for defunding of the police over a year ago, and I find it just as silly now. And frankly, 99% of the people that live in my district in the city that I talk to would not agree with that. Um, unfortunately, you know, we have a bunch of constraints. We could use more officers. So, yes, this council, and more importantly, the citizens of this city, back the police. When mistakes are made, when accidents happen, we confront them. But uh, we will continue, continue to have the, one of the best police forces in the nation. And then I would just say, simply put, yesterday was Veterans Day, so thank you to all the families whose loved ones died. They gave up their loved ones in a war. For our country, and thank you to them up in the great uh, battlefield in, uh, in the sky. Memorial Day. Memorial Day, what did I say? Veterans I'm sorry, Day. Memorial Day. I was going to correct you if I was waiting. You no, the mayor did it. <laughs> Terry? You say Christmas. <laughs> you say Christmas. <laughs> you said Halloween. <laughs> you know, just on the heels of uh, the city manager announcement of the new department head, I'd just like to publicly thank Jim Tory for stepping into. Uh, <clears throat> that position held it down I think and you know work closely with it with the land use and legislative committee as chair I just like to publicly thank you Jim for you know stepping in that role and keeping the ship steady thank you not so, easy uh, not easy job I don't know quite how the White Sox organization found out that uh, a number of volunteers from the fire department oh, yeah. and uh, other volunteers were going up to a game, but uh, I'd like to obviously thank them for stepping up and offering them uh, free uh, tickets and beverages and the like. We Obviously, we all appreciate everything they did and showed that uh, there are a lot of volunteers here in Joliet and now that it's, uh, I guess their time is done, uh, but there is still <coughs> shots available and anybody didn't get one. Um, you still have your opportunities, please do so. And Eva Marie, welcome to Joliet. Happy to have you. And Mr. Torrey, um, happy you're here also, as Terry had mentioned. You've done a great job. Well, you know so much, but you don't because we still have another 
April, round to one, go I it was on one, June one around June seventh. We're going to follow up with the with the kids that we gave uh, vaccines to the twelve to seventeen year olds. So anyhow, too bad you didn't volunteer. It was a great game. Anyway, um, <laughs> no experience. <laughs> you said it. I didn't. <laughs> anyhow, um, Memorial Day was. People forget why that we have that day back. Years ago, I remember my grandmother used to call it Decoration Day because you'd go out and decorate the graves. But the true meaning is to remember all the people that did lose their lives fighting for our freedom. Uh, to jump on the police thing, uh, even though the blue ribbons were for the volunteers, I noticed when all this turmoil started to happen, the blue ribbons started coming back out again with the flag, with the black and white American flag with the blue ribbon in the middle saying, we support our police department. So. And I made it very clear a long time ago, I would never vote to defund the police because they put their lives on the line every single day and this is not an easy job. Uh, along the lines of the pet thing, I know it was a long legislative night in Springfield yesterday, but I'm glad that our legislatures got it right. Got it right. No more puppy mill sales in the city of Joliet. I'm so happy about that. Actually, like I said, it was the light at the end of a very long, tough day for me. So thank you, Ms. Grandall, for bringing that forward. And thank you for all the work that you've done to protect our little guys, our little pets. And having said all that, thank you to everyone. And um, be well and stay safe. Sure. <laughs> I can't top all this. <laughs> Other than, I didn't realize that Sox organization was still in business. <laughs> Go Cubs. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. oh, here we go. Oh, boy. <laughs> Last two years look like <laughs> Sherry. Okay. It is, it is true the Cubs have the most fans in Chicago. The Sox have the most baseball fans. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm um, a baseball fan. All right. On um, May 21st, Valor Nutrition held the ribbon cutting at 2225 West Jefferson. Sweet D, welcome, Valor. Uh, Cosmo Morris, I know you were there. Thank you, Chamber of Commerce, for putting that on. On the 23rd, uh, the Joliet Fire Department did their annual memorial service at St. John's Church, uh, led by Brother Ed. Um, Council Mudgeon, I know you were at that, so uh, thank you to Brother Ed and St. John's. I do want to wish, um, I don't know if it's appropriate to say Happy Memorial Day, but do want to thank our veterans and the families of veterans and those who lost their lives, um, and I hope they had a good Memorial Day. And then two other things on a personal note. Um, I, I know I'm having such a hard time with Mother's Day this year, but... Um, <laughs> We forgot to mention it before Mother's Day. I brought it up two weeks late, and I forgot to mention my mother-in-law, Ruth Evans. So um, to keep peace in my household, <laughs> I want to thank my mother-in-law, who, um, in all fairness, for like six or seven weeks, she was my driver um, after the knee injury. I couldn't drive anywhere. So thank you, Ruth. Happy Mother's Day, even though it's a little bit late. And then finally, I want to congratulate my stepdaughter, Madison Palacios. She is a, a eighth-grade graduate of St. Paul's. She also was the winner of the President's Award this year through St. Paul. So she'll be attending Joliet Central next year, but we're very proud of her. Congratulations, Madison. And that's all I have for tonight. Is there a motion to adjourn? It's all moved. Second. And motion and seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Being adjourned. Aye. Oh, okay.